And welcome to the Technology Geek Podcast. I am your host, Brandon Lapani, the Technology Geek. And uh, what a wonderful uh, show we have planned today for you, answering qu- quite a few uh, good questions. And I um, wanted to thank everybody right away for the, uh, for the overwhelming response. For, uh, as a lot of people know, we are moving our site uh, to a new platform called the... Uh, the technologygeek.org we uh was hosted on a business and um we've moved on and uh you know we're we're devoting a lot more time to the site and uh you know giving the site its own its own home and um focusing more on the site so uh we're very happy with that uh you know we've been doing this quite a few years and uh it's wor- it worked out well for us to the point where we're going to be doing a lot more of it so I um, want to thank everybody for that and the other thing that we've been doing too is we've been uh moving over our uh, our platform over uh, which has been a bit of a project. Those of you that are um, familiar with web development know that what what a process um, a moving platforms and moving domains can be. But we're moving over every post and every podcast, so it's it's taking us some time. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel up, and and we're doing a lot of other things that we never haven't done before in the past. But uh, things are doing very very well, and it's all thanks to you, the listeners and the readers of the the website. So we want to thank everybody for that, and thank everybody for their support. And um, we couldn't do this without you. Uh, we also want to thank our sponsors and all that. So um, you know, the technology geek is something that's here to stay for a while. It's free; it will always be free. Uh, you know, we make money on the sponsorships and. Uh, you know, on the sales of stuff of our store, and, uh, you know, it'll always be free, and uh, we're very happy that we're able to, you know, we've gotten such an overwhelming response that we're able to do it as, uh, you know, more and, and do more things with it, so it's, we're very grateful and we're happy for that. Uh, for those of you that uh, are new to the Technology Geek, since we moved the site to let you know how this works, um, you send your questions to me via uh, Twitter, at Lapani Tech, or you Skype me, at Lapani Tech, and uh, I'll answer all your uh, all your questions. Um, but like I said, I, I do answer them. Uh, I get back to people. Uh, some of them do make, not all of them make the show. I, I couldn't possibly do, well, if we did a show every day, we probably could, could get all the questions on there, but we didn't do that. But, uh, you know, we, we have quite a few, uh, you know, quite a, quite a few questions and, and we answer them and, and the good ones make, make the show. Um, uh, and what, what's funny is that I didn't realize it was such a competition with our, with our listeners to, uh, to see who can send in the best question to make the show. Some of the regulars I've noticed that's becoming like a competition between all of you to see who can uh who can get the best question to make the show. So it's uh kind of a neat thing there. Uh by the way, you can get uh find all of our uh, I talked about our store, you can find all of our stuff all of our store stuff uh, on our store. If you go to our website, the technologygeek.org, click on the store. Uh, if you want to go directly to it, by the way, AACRstore.com and uh where we sell all of our products for the uh sell products and uh merchandise, stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot of different stuff up there as far as, uh, you know, uh, computer gadgets, parts, uh, accessories, all different types of stuff. It'd be worth your while to go up there and check out our eBay store and see what we got up there. And uh, it's part of the way how we fund the site, so we'd appreciate that along with our wonderful sponsors. And uh, by the way, if you've, those of you that have clicked on our sponsor page on the new site, have noticed we have a couple of new sponsors. Uh, you know, uh, right now Roku, we get a Roku fifty nine ninety nine. They're a great sponsor. Um, plenty of channels on the online now. I think that's really the way television is going to start going is all online. But uh, in my opinion, they're ahead of the curve. You get the uh, the Roku box, you get all the channels fifty nine ninety nine. If you click through our sponsor link, we'll get the credit for it. We'd appreciate that. And that's really a wonderful product. I have one myself, and uh, I love it. Um, watch Netflix on it, Hulu, Amazon Prime. Uh, I actually watch uh, uh, Leo Laporte's show on twit.tv. They have a channel. And as well as uh, prisonplanet.tv. They're another one. They have a great uh, Alex Jones show. I don't know if anybody listens to him, but uh, they have their own channel there. Pretty much any, everything and anything that's on the Internet has a channel there. So it's really a wonderful service. Uh, like I said, it's on sale, $59.99. It's a trial code off the site for free to get it. Click through. We got the credit for it. And uh, it's really, really a, a wonderful service. Um, they have all different models as well. I have the uh, the XD, and it, it's fabulous. Let me tell you, it's probably the best thing, one of the best little gadgets I have bought in the house. And uh, we actually bought a television with... Uh, with all that stuff built in, we actually hooked the Roku to it because the Roku is that much better. So it shows you how wonderful their products are. So we uh, are a wonderful sponsor. We're glad to have them. Uh, as far as the this, for, usually what we have a little, usually what we do is we'll, we'll go through and uh, do the news first. Um, you know, things that particularly catch my interest and, and things that people send me. Um, let me see. We, there's quite a few this week, but uh, 
one of the things is that uh, was funny. It's reading this uh, this whole thing. This uh, Katie Webb, she was a uh, the the girlfriend of a quarterback for uh, I guess a, f- a famous football. I'm not not a sports fan by the way at all, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, I heard about this because this guy apparently his uh, his girlfriend apparently they showed her she was I believe Miss Michigan. Let me bring up the I'll bring up the uh, the story real quickly. But uh, she would think she was Miss Michigan or something like that. And make a long story short, she had. I believe she had like 2,000 Twitter followers. The uh, the guys at the um, the announcers actually mentioned her name during the uh, during the show, and uh, by the end of the by the end of the game, she had by, the, by that morning she had like 150,000 followers. Um, yeah, she was uh, she's the uh, yeah, she was. It was. Uh, it was during one of the football games. The announcer, his exact words were, "Why do all the quarterbacks always get the good girls? You boys, it's uh, incentive for you young kids to go out and throw the ball around." They took pictures of her, explained that she was the quarterback's girlfriend, and lo and behold, by the next morning, she had like a hundred some thousand Twitter followers. It was jumping like fifteen hundred every like fifteen twenty minutes. It was insane, but uh, quite interesting. Uh, not so much related to tech, but kind of uh, showing you the the power of the. Uh, of Twitter, how many people actually do follow people's Twitters and all that type of stuff. It's kind of amazing. And I figured I'd throw it in there. I thought it was kind of interesting myself. Um, but yeah, she was, it gets a lot of followers, man, let me tell you. Especially for something that only took 24 hours to do. Um, some of the other, some of the other interesting uh, stories we have here, uh, HP uh, exclusive has a uh, HP, HBO uh, inks an exclusive ten year deal with the Universal to keep content out of Netflix hands. Um, <laughs> you know that's uh, you know just like anything else, you know a- HBO is is there to make money and they have a lot of original content. Um, HBO or Netflix doesn't, and uh, you know they they do want to keep keep their big shows like you know True Blood and stuff like that on on their particular you know their channel and I'll blame them you know they they have original content obviously they they have to make money as well but uh, they want to keep it in Netflix hands you know a lot you know at the beginning a lot of people were signing with Netflix they didn't realize the the power of Netflix and uh, it seems like over the last couple of years a lot of these companies have gotten really smart and have said hey we're we're not going to give our content up to Netflix we'll make our own online service and make the money ourselves so I think it was a quite an interesting quite an interesting thing they they did but um you know, Netflix definitely was was ahead of the curve. I mean, I remember up to a couple of years ago. You know, you went there every single, every single corner you went on. There was a video store. Not anymore. As soon as Netflix came out, sort of mailing the DVDs. That's how it all started for them. I said, "This is going to take over," and it, it did. And uh, you know, then they started with their streaming service, which is another fabulous thing. You know, you don't have to leave your house to get a movie. And uh, you know, they they they've gone from there, and, and they're really you know a fabulous company, but. Uh, you know, unfortunately now all the other companies are seeing the power of them, and instead of now giving them the content like they were at the beginning, now they're like, "Whoa, hey, you know, let's let's make our own streaming service." So it it's it's helping them, but it's you know, it's helping you know, these other companies are helping themselves, and you know, I think it's going to hurt Netflix in the end unless they get some original content. Um, those of you out there, I know a lot of you. We we I know we we talked about a little bit about the Terra Nova. That was such a fabulous series. It was it costing like four million an episode to make. Something like that. It's kind of an insane number. And uh, I remember how, you know, the Net- when when Fox canceled the 13 episodes, the uh, one of the highest rated shows on Fox, actually, it was. And uh, a lot of people thought that Netflix was going to pick it up, but they didn't show any interest in it. You know, I, I really think that that's what, Net- something like that, Netflix should have picked up. That would have been a huge, huge revenue draw for them, I think, as far as original content. Because they do need to get some original content because they don't have any. Uh, you know, they are picking up shows like Revenge and, and some of the other ones that are on ABC and NBC, but... I still think that they have a long way to go, and uh, you know, I, I think it's it's definitely you know, it, it definitely you know it, they definitely need to, they could have they had a great opportunity there with um, to pick up Terra Nova with Steven Spielberg, and they didn't. I think that's a, it was a massive mistake for them. I think it would have been some great original content that they could have had, and I think it would have definitely been a a huge draw for them, a draw that they they need. Uh, you know, they've been on a tear with some bad management and, and stuff like that over the last couple of years, and. Uh, you know they're they're slowly you know they're 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 definitely getting better. I mean I know myself I'm always on Netflix and, and they have a deal with WWE for all the documentaries and stuff. If you're a wrestling fan, which I know some of you are, um, you know they they've got some very 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 good DVDs on there. A lot of good shows, but you know the problem you know Netflix has definitely gotten better over the years, but um, there's still there's still a lot they don't have. Let's put it that way. But 
but uh, that's that's the the deal with them. The one thing that I thought was neat, and it's not much to talk about with it, but um, Pirate Bay was actually was actually down uh, today a little bit. Uh, you know, we talk about security here quite a bit, and that was kind of neat because Pirate Bay is almost never down, and uh, it was down for. Uh, uh, the post what I'm reading here, uh, uh, Pirate Bay has been uh, downtime now, uh, but considering Pirate Bay, uh, do, 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 they're saying it was routine maintenance. I don't know about that, but it was down for a little bit. It's kind of neat. Made Gizmodo. One of the other things that I, I thought was, was really neat was the... Uh, was I was reading, I happened to stumble across an article on NBC the other day. A guy apparently, <laughs> um, while he was vacationing with his wife in uh, Cancun, uh, he didn't touch his Facebook, which most of us don't when we're on vacation with your cell phone nowadays. You can, but I don't. I'm on vacation. I'm trying to leave tech a little bit on its own. But uh, when they returned home, uh, Foster learned, much to his surprise, that uh, he was dead. At least his, his Facebook was uh, was concerned. Uh, you know, it turns out uh, while he was away, a, a prankster, uh, a friend of his, uh, had him declared dead on Facebook, which is surprisingly easy, uh, believe it or not. But uh, since Facebook has no real-time consumer service hotline, uh, getting you know your your profile resurrected um, was kind of a kind of a process. But you know, it was kind of. He kind of, I think he wrote the, bu- it's from I'm reading here, he wrote, wrote the BuzzFeed uh, asking if they could help him out. And, uh, but uh, BuzzFeed interrupted uh, reporter Keaton to help out by trying to, or by turning around and Facebook murdering their colleague, John Herman, of course, uh, being dead at least on the internet is uh, a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a problem, Herman said. Uh, it's been worrying, uh, worrying about his whole life, uh, and it turned out just to be a Facebook status update. So it's amazing what people do on the internet nowadays. Is a joke, but hey, we live in uh, we live in the digital age, right? In the information age, and uh, it's so easy to declare somebody dead. But uh, by contacting uh, BuzzFeed, though, Foster, uh, Foster, you know. At, he had a res- got his profile resurrected and uh you know fill out an online form called my personal account is in special mem was it memor state but has been but he hasn't but he wasn't keen on killing time in social media so he ended up i think he wrote a letter to he wrote a letter he wrote a face uh, an email to Facebook. Uh, Foster Foster said he found a, uh, a few search results and um, he ended up dig- he ended up he got his Facebook uh, his Facebook account resurrected. So it's kind of neat. It was dead. So it's, it's you know it's it's one thing that's amazing how hard it is to get a hold of Facebook. I never actually realized that, but it's, it's amazing how difficult it is to get a hold of them. And uh, obviously, I mean, you know, for the most part, not, no major, no major thing is lost if you can't get on your Facebook. You know what I mean? But um, you know, I, you know, I guess for some people it could be aggravating, especially when if your family. And, you know, a lot, the problem is with Facebook. A lot of people friend you and stuff like that, and you know, when they think you're dead, it uh, you know could be you know very tragic to a lot of your family and friends. So it was kind of a kind of a stupid prank, but it was also kind of a pain. You couldn't get it undone. Um, let's see what else do we have. Uh, by the way, Netflix signs a uh, an exclusive U.S. online rights to Warner Brothers for 2012-2013 drama shows, including Revolution, uh, the fo- uh, the following, and The West Wing. So this is something else that uh, you know Facebook getting more content, and uh, you know, you know the the Facebook you know Netflix is is in is in an online battle man, between you know pay TV and uh, the over the top providers. So you know it, it's really neat to see you know what they're doing and they are getting a lot of original series uh you know i know uh yeah i know especially with you know sigourney reaver and and political animals that's a huge pickup for them from what i was reading and uh you know kevin bacon you know you know the following you know that that's a huge one for them as well so you know it's i definitely think they've they've they're definitely picking up some more content here but 
they when losing AMC and all that type of stuff, my opinion hurt them because a lot of the shows that I watched was on there. Uh, so I was a little upset about that, but they are working on trying to pick up as much information as you know, shows and information as they can. So. Uh, you know, I, I hate to talk about CES, but, you know, a lot of the news this week was was based around it. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll talk about CES, some of the stuff that I saw that I liked. Um, I'll just click through real quick to see what what, what there was. Samsung, uh, obviously, uh, unveiled a new smart TV and other gadgets at CES. That was an obvious one. Like I said, we're not going to talk too much on CES, guys. There's a million podcasts talking about CES. I hate to even talk about it because there's so much, you know, there's just so much out there as far as CES goes. So I don't really want to go crazy on it. Um, but NVIDIA, you know, NVIDIA announcing the Shield game system, that was a big thing. You know, a video game system that's based on the Android OS that you can actually play on your on your, uh, your hand, you know, on your handheld. And it actually looks a lot like an Xbox controller for those of you that haven't seen it. Uh, but, you know, like I said, I don't want to talk too much on CES, but that was one of the things that was unveiled. And, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. Uh, one of the other things, I guess, that, that was released um, that hasn't barely been shown too much was the Ubuntu uh, OS. I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, but now they actually showed a demo of it at CES. And it actually looks really good. You know, it's, they're saying, you know, they, that the apps are going to be able to port right over from Android or right over to Ubuntu. So we'll see what happens with that. I think this could have a lot of potential. They're trying to do the same model that Microsoft did, you know, one OS across all the devices, across your desktop, your phone, and all that. And I, and I think it does have potential. Um, I think they've had the, they, they probably have the potential to do much better than Microsoft did. Um, knowing Ubuntu, they're, 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 they can do it better than Microsoft can, trust me. But uh, they actually unveiled the phone. It's actually really great. And uh, there's a YouTube video up. I'll, I'll put it in the show notes. And, uh, you know, it was a really, really great, uh, really great to see them, you know, really pushing hard. You know, they, they've taken major strides in the desktop as well as now they're going to take it on the phone. Um, you know, they've taken some steps in the entertainment uh, as far as, like, you know, uh, Ubuntu TV and all that type of stuff. So it's great to see them still in the game. Uh, so, you know, running a slow third, but, uh, you know, they're still in the, the hunt. Maybe a slow fourth, but they're still in the hunt. So it's good to see another co- company out there. Hey, at least they're doing better than Rim is, right? You didn't even hear one thing almost about BlackBerry as far as CES goes, which is really bad. Especially when you're when you're a failing company, you definitely need some big uh, some big guns, and then they don't pull them out at all. Um, but one of these that was kind of cool at CES, which I, I had to talk about because a lot of people out there remember, just like I do, is the Sony released a waterproof Walkman. And no, it's not a Walkman; they just call it a Walkman. It's actually digital. It's actually you know like an iPod type thing, but it's it's uh, it's waterproof. So that was kind of neat. I thought everybody would get a kick out of that. I know I did. Uh, and then another thing too was Kingston uh, released a one gig. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, one gig, <laughs> one terabyte uh, USB 3.0 flash drive. That was kind of neat. Um, and then also too, Intel gave us an inside look on their new hardware, which I have to tell you was really cool. It's actually a laptop that comes apart in two pieces, and the screen works independently from the from the laptop. I thought that was kind of neat. Or you can actually use the laptop part in, with the screen uh, separated if you want to put the screen somewhere and then sit in the chair or something with your keyboard. You could do that. But that was really neat. I thought that was kind of cool. And uh, that was one of the things that I really thought was kind of neat. Uh, you know, Intel been struggling a little bit as far as they don't make any, you know, they don't make chips for the cell phone. But uh, definitely coming out with some innovative stuff. So it would be neat to see what they do recently. They have a new CEO. The CEO is retiring in May. So it would be neat to see... Uh, what the new person does. And, and you never know. I mean, some, some companies, you know, when this new old CEO goes and a new CEO comes, it does bigger and better for them. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, some of those, I guess, uh, well, let me uh, let me go into a commercial here quickly because we haven't really done really too many commercials. I'll go into a quick commercial here. Um, yeah, I'll go through that. Let me do a quick commercial here, guys. Uh, for, go ahead. Uh, well, actually, one of our major, uh, major advertising sponsors is Audible. You can try Audible free for 30 days and get a free audio book. Uh, if you just go ahead and uh, type type in uh, audibletrial.com slash techgeek and sign up. You get one free download and 30 days free of their gold membership. If you do that, by the way, we'll get the credit for it. We'd greatly appreciate that. And uh, like I said, you get the... Try Audible free for 30 days and get you one free download. You get, the, you get your first 30 days of Audible uh, listener gold membership plan free. Includes one free credit. Uh, in almost any cases, the one, cre- one free credit is equal to one book. 
Uh, some of the books are two credits, but for the most part, I've seen 99% of the good books are one credit. But uh, I actually have an Audible account. I love it myself. I listen to it at the gym. I listen to it when I'm on the go. Uh, it's a fabulous, fabulous, um, fabulous service. I love Audible. They're, they're a great, uh, great company, and uh, they're owned by Amazon, by the way. And, uh, you know, they're really, really uh, just fabulous. You know, you're running the treadmill in the gym and you're listening to a book. You know, it's, it's really wonderful. And I, should, and I strongly recommend anybody who's an avid reader to go ahead and pick that up. And what's also good, if, too, if you have the new Kindle, uh, this actually integrates with it as well. So if you have that, you can actually get the books to actually read to you, which is actually really cool uh, on the Kindle. And, um, you know, it's really, really, really wonderful service. And uh, I love it. I, I have it. And, and I've read a co- quite a few good books. Actually, I'm just... Uh, I'm actually reading Chris Hardwick's book right now. Uh, it's a great book, uh, kind of kind of more, more of a self help book. But I, I really do enjoy, uh, you know, him out on television and stuff like that. So I figured to pick it up. It's not a long book, but I figured it's worth to read. And I actually just downloaded my copy of World War Z. I'm gonna try to. I always try to read the book before the movie comes out. Uh, the movie looks fantastic, but I want to read the book before the movie comes out. So I downloaded that as well. So definitely have some reading to do. Uh, you know, in in really. I even went ahead and even read the Bourne book, uh, the Bourne Legacy, before it came out. Absolutely nothing like the movie, by the way. And uh, I, I'd make it a point of, of, of reading or, or listening to books on the go. So, uh, and and, uh, and, I, and I love my Audible service, and it's really, really great. Uh, it's definitely probably one of, some of the best fourteen ninety five a month I spend, and I definitely got my money's worth out of it. So again, it's a. Uh, you want to you, you want to get a one free month free? Use our promo code audibletrial.com dot com slash techgeek. And uh, you can get that free trial code and uh, get a free month of Audible. Any of our listeners. So uh, some other some other side news. Getting back to uh, getting back to tech. Uh, some of our some of our side news here is the um, Dropbox is finally releasing a Windows 8 client. I cannot tell you how many people have asked me about this. Um, that uh, Dropbox, when are they going to release a Windows 8 client? I don't know why they were so far behind, but uh, they're finally coming out with a Windows 8 client. So go ahead, if, you have, if you're a Dropbox fan, you have Windows 8, go ahead and grab the uh, grab the new client. It just came out, by the way. Uh, some other interesting news, actually, is Safari turned 10 on Tuesday. I can't play Safari's 10. I didn't think it was that old. Oh, yeah, it turned 10 on... Uh, Turn ten on Tuesday. Speaking of uh, of turning te- of uh, of Apple, another great thing that that sprung my attention is that the rumors going around about the new cheap iPhone, uh, which is going to be uh, released. Um, yes, they're looking to release. They have they've been very skeptical by the way. On the this is just a rumor. I, I have you know nothing is confirmed yet, but uh, you know it's a rumor buzzing right now. Uh, rumors, uh, Apple is revealing a cheaper version of the iPhone. Uh, maybe that the news feels like. A small retail announcement, uh, if it's true, uh, more than likely into Apple's grand strategy since the death of its founder CEO. Uh, the biggest technology company in the world is in a position it rarely found itself in the last 10 years under Steve Jobs, paying kept playing catch up in a race for the market share. Yeah, I'm glad somebody finally brought that up in the news because a lot of people don't realize that Apple's playing catch up. Um, and before, when, you know. Before Steve Jobs, you know, before you know, before Steve, you know, before Steve Jobs passed away, they were ahead in the market. Now they're behind. So, unfortunately, I think it's, it's not. You know, Apple's still the biggest company in the world, but and, and they definitely have brand recognition, which is keeping them alive. But uh, they, believe me, by when I tell you they're they're playing catch up. There, there's a lot of features the Droid has that the Apple still doesn't have. It's not going to be until the next release. Um, mostly in those, you know, Jobs didn't care about market share. Uh, as he did, you know, innovation and, and doing wonderful things. And, um, you know, uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, the, the, the jobs I remember specifically did was the iPod and iTunes uh, story. And that was a big thing for them, especially with iTunes. You know, they're one of the biggest music sellers in the world. So, I mean, you know, he kind of took a problem with people's pirating music and turned it into a legitimate business. And that was a really great move by him. But apparently what they're saying is that uh, 33% of the, of the share um, – let me read the whole thing. <laughs> uh, Samsung phones uh, uh, open a 10% point average over the iPhone and global market, 33% share up to 21%. Uh, the Google Android software now runs uh, pretty much on, on almost any of the, the world's smartphones. Uh, Apple portions of the world, obviously, it's just their own devices. So uh, they're saying Apple possibly could to compete with the Droid, possibly bring out a cheaper iPhone. 
to compete with the Droid because, as you know, if you're looking, if you anytime you go into a cell phone store, Apple's always the most expensive one there. They need to do something about their price point, and that's what I think they're going to do by releasing a cheaper iPhone. So that's only a rumor, by the way. I have nothing confirmed. I just want to let that know, folks. Um, I have nothing confirmed yet, but that's what they're saying. Uh, well, speaking of speaking of uh, software companies, we'll get on to Microsoft. Um, as everybody knows, they're going to be retiring the uh, Windows Messenger in March, but uh, apparently just because they're retiring, it doesn't mean they're not going to switch off the service for those 12 months, so you're good till March of 2013 if you're a, a Windows Messenger user. But yeah, they are definitely going to get rid of it in favor of Skype, which they should. Anyway, Skype's got much better brand recognition. Uh, the other thing I thought we'd talk about, too, um, not so much related to tech. I mean, it is related to tech because it is satellites and all that type of stuff. But um, apparently Liberty Media um, is apparently taking over uh, Sirius XM. They just got approved by the FCC. They got to wait 30 days, and they're going to take over Sirius XM. Um, Liberty Media owns Stars QVC and about uh, 48% of uh, DirecTV. And apparently they took they uh, they took over um, taking over Sirius XM, and uh, apparently you know uh, John Malone, who is the uh, he's apparently one of the big wigs that's been putting this this hostile takeover kind of in place, buying up the shares of stock and all that type of stuff. Apparently the takeover is going to happen, but uh, from what I'm reading and what I've heard is that they're probably they're probably just going to keep it spin it's going to spin it off and keep it running because uh, it's it's profitable. Uh, it, it is actually, actually, but, but, I mean, I know a lot of people know that, uh, about maybe four or five years ago, Sirius, uh, was, uh, Sirius XM was in, was in bankruptcy. And before that, they merged together to save each other a couple of years prior before that. So they, uh, they haven't been doing too, they, they weren't doing too well for a couple of years. Um, you know, they were loaned some money, uh, the 500, uh, Malone actually, who was the guy that, that pushed the house takeover, actually saved them out of bankruptcy, Malone, the 530 million. Or five, yeah, five hundred thirty million, and uh, now it's five hundred thirty million worth, but two billion. Um, and I say the company is actually turning a profit, uh, mainly because they're in every single car that's manufactured, whether it be Sirius or XM. And uh, you know, there's um, you know, there, there's a lot of other things going on, but but, but from what I've read, uh, you know, the the company is very profitable. Um, you know, they're making a profit. Uh, you know, actually, believe it or not, what I was surprised was reading some articles is that Pandora. Um, apparently isn't doing that much. They're pretty much borderline, or, or if not, in the red. Um, and Spotify, they're saying, is in the red too. So I'm a little bit, a little bit interesting. Um, you know, Pandora's been around for a while, but they say Pandora still is kind of a profit. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because the thing that's saving Sirius, and, and I and I know it, and uh, you know, it's it's been it's been public, is, is that they're they're in every freaking new car now. So I mean, that's definitely saved them a lot. Um. Yeah, I mean, when when you're in every every new car, um, you know, I mean, I mean, I, I don't know many people that buy cars with satellite and don't activate it. So, I think that's a huge saver for them, and uh, you know, yeah, you know, uh, the the thing that they're saying is, you know, as as bad as it is, you know, auto sales continue, you know, auto sales are continuing to rise as we come out of this uh, this economic slowdown, and. Uh, you know they're 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 continuing to improve as auto sales are doing well because obviously as you know they you know they they everybody practically buys a new car to get serious in it or XM in it nowadays so um, it's great to see them you know prospering and uh, and they're making money and I'm actually surprised out of, out of all the companies they're actually making more money than Pandora or Spotify but the other the other thing with that is too you have to remember too they have original content um, you know, I, I'm a big Opie and Anthony fan myself I like the radio show in the morning. And uh, you know you have Stern too. He's a he, he, he's a huge draw for them. There's no doubt about that. And um, you also too, they have a, a lot of other original content as well, as syndicated content. You know, I know myself. I like the Alex Jones show, and I can't get him on FM radio anywhere where I'm located. But uh, I can get him on satellite. And uh, you know, Leah Laporte's on satellite as well. You know, there's so many. You know, they have so much original content and syndicated radio on there. It's just a fantastic. Um, they're really kicking FM's butt. And I've tell you, just recently I got some. Um, Got my dad a Sirius radio, and uh, he didn't think he was going to like it. And now he said ever since he got the Sirius radio, he hasn't turned the FM radio back on. So um, it definitely is a uh, something that, um, you know, that, 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 that you get hooked on. So 
those who don't have it, by the way, Sirius XM is a great service. You might want to look into it. Uh, I know it can be, you know, it's an extra bill you don't have to have every month, but if you can afford it uh, and, and you drive as much as a lot of people do, it's definitely worth having. And I know myself, I do a little traveling myself, and it's great to have. Not to mention, like I said, I like Opie and Anthony. So. I think we're going to wrap it up. By the way, it was funny. Was when we were talking about Liberty Media the other day, um, my best friend says to me, he goes, you know, Liberty Media, who owns uh, QVC, owns part of DirecTV. That would explain why there's so many shopping, shopping channels on uh, DirecTV. So I thought that was kind of funny. A lot of people get a kick out of that. Let's see. We're going to try it now, too. I'm gonna get, we're going we're gonna to try to get to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one more advertisement, folks, and then I'm going to your, get to your questions here. Like I said, we're just, like I said, we're just gonna do one more quick. I mean, I'm gonna go to one more quick ad, and then we're gonna uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna we're gonna get to your uh, get to your questions here, because I do want to get to your questions and spend a lot of time on them. A- AVG PC tune-up. Uh, peak performance for your PC speeds it up, cleans it up, and powers it up. Go to our site, thetechnologygeek.org/sponsors. Uh, or you can click on the go to technologygeek.org and click on the sponsors link in the head, uh, however you prefer. Um, and you go to go to the bo- scroll to the bottom of our sponsor page. You see AVG PC Tuna. Click through there for a free uh, trial offer and uh, try it. AVG PC Tuna free free for 30 days. Fabulous product. I like it myself. I put I have AVG on my one Windows computer I have here. Uh, this better job of Microsoft Internet. Uh, your Microsoft, yeah, Forefront. Let me try that one again. Microsoft Security Essentials. Uh, it's a fabulous product. I love it. I recommend it to anybody who has a PC. Make sure you protect that PC with AVG PC Tune-Up, as well as get rid of your malware and your viruses. Again, it's AVG PC Tune-Up, and it's technology, uh, the, the technologygeek.org slash sponsors is at the bottom. Fabulous product, by the way. to your questions here. Okay, first question. Well, that's, whoa, is that, well, that's actually a good question. I forgot this one made it in. Uh, how, do I, how do I paste in plain text without getting the formatting into Google Docs? Let me see. You're going to do a Shift-Control-V. It's going to paste in without... It's gonna, that's, gonna, that's actually going to paste in without... Without the formatting, that's actually a really good question. I actually didn't know you can do that in Google Docs. So I'm also doing, I'm going to do some reading on that and that offline. Somebody said to me, "What do you know about offline Google Docs?" And I didn't make the it wasn't a it hasn't made the, the I haven't gotten back to them yet. They, I got the email right before the show started, and I'm going to look into that offline Google Docs. So I have more information on that for you for everybody next week. Um, what else do we have here? How can I image my hard drive so I don't lose anything? Well, imaging a hard drive, there's a couple ways you can do that. Um, I personally would recommend it. It depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to keep, I know a lot of places that like like school districts and stuff like that that have computer labs in case the kids mess them up. They run deep freeze on it. Deep freeze is actually really cool, by the way. Um, it's kind of neat. You just you you install it and you lock it with a password. No matter what the kid does, no matter what anybody does, as soon as you restart the computer, it's back to the uh, the original configuration it was when you. Um, when when you uh, when you install Deep Freeze, so that's very very cool. I like that. It's a great product. Uh, again, that's Deep Freeze. That's a good one. Or if you want to image it to another hard drive, you can use Norton Ghost. Fifty nine bucks, you can go through your machine. It's not bad. I like it. How can I fend off? Oh, here's this is more of a security question. We haven't done a good couple of security questions here in a while. Um, how can I fend off telemarketers and scammers? Uh, well, you know that that's that's a good question. I think I think everybody's. Trying to fend off telemarketers nowadays. Um, what I do, what I like, what I have, um, I look at my caller ID. If I recognize the number, I pick it up. If I don't, um, if, I, if I, you know, I'll look up the number real quick in Google if I'm by a machine. If not, uh, you know, pick it up. If the telemarketer hang up on them, or what I like to do, um, if it's a private number, I just like it a voicemail. I'll return it later. That's what I do anyway. There's no really way to fend them off. Just use your caller ID to your advantage. It's the best tool you have against that. I'm looking for a cheap, ineffective way to do screen sharing. That's a good one. Um, well, 
Uh, there's two you can use. The free one is join.me. That's a good one. I like that one myself. I use it. Uh, it's cheap. It's free. It works on the it works on the, the iPad. It works on Droid. It works on uh, Mac, Windows. It runs on all of them. So join.me is one. The other one you can use is TeamViewer. That's, uh, that's another popular one. Um, uh, I don't believe that's free anymore. Let me look that up. I'm going to Google that quickly for you. Team Viewer. It's teamviewer.com by the link as you're wondering. I'm wondering if that one's free. I don't think that's free. Oh, it, 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 well, okay, it's free for private use. Okay. Yeah, it is free for private use. So Team Viewer is another one you can use. LogBeans another good one, too. Let's see what other good questions we have. There's a lot of questions this week. I think it's I think it's we've moved over to the new site. Everybody wants you know, they, We've caught the attention of quite a few people. And our SEO has been much better since we moved to our new hosting. We're using... What are we using for a platform? I think we're using WordPress for a platform. We're hosted on GoDaddy. But it's uh, it definitely we've definitely came along with the site much better than what we have. And it's nice to have our own site now and not be attached to the business site anymore. Like I say, we've kind of moved on a little bit. We're getting moving all the posts. That's been challenging. Oh, here we go. Here's, here's the one I wanted to get to. I knew I had it. Uh, do I use Skype or FaceTime? You know that that's a really good question, and and I can't tell you actually. I've gotten that question a few times. I was surprised it never made it to the show. Um, Skype is designed for any platform. So whether you're using a Droid, whether you're using uh, iOS, Mac OS, Windows, it works on any platform. FaceTime is only a Mac product. So if you have somebody that has, say, a Kindle, they can't FaceTime you. If you Skype, they can. So say you have an Android, say you have an Android, and they have a. Well, first of all, if you have an if they have an Android and, and you have a Kindle, you, you can't use FaceTime because either one of you have an Apple. Fa- FaceTime's only an Apple thing, whereas Skype is um, for for any platform. So, um, but actually, what's kind of cool with the new, with the new Kindle is since there's a front facing camera, you can actually do Skype on the Kindle. It's kind of cool. But again, you can't you can't use FaceTime unless you unless you both have Mac. So you're going to have to use Skype. Find out what kind of uh, what kind of platform they're running, and uh, and then let me know, and I can get you get you uh, directions on how they can install install Skype. I personally like Skype a little better. I think the brand recognition is a little better. I think it's a little. I mean, I mean, I like FaceTime, but I personally like Skype. So I don't have to worry about oh, do they have a Mac? Don't they have a Mac? You know, it's, it just it's ease of ease of usability. So. But uh, yeah, I do like I do like Skype. Skype's really good. Plus, too, you can message them. You don't only really have to FaceTime them too. With FaceTime, you have to talk to them face to face. With Skype, you can message them if it's not something that important. Kind of like sending your friend a text rather than calling them on your phone. So, I recommend Skype. If you want a Mac, though, FaceTime is just as good. But um, unless, if, if you know what type of device he has, and it is a Mac, do FaceTime. But if you if you're doing if you, if you don't know what they have, just recommend Skype. I think almost everybody has a Skype account anymore. Getting to be like the new Facebook, as far as I think that is going to be the the unified messaging system. It's going to be like Facebook, pretty much, where everybody has a Skype account. But now what else do we have? Uh, well, this is a good one. We'll do a hardware question. Uh, wireless printer suggestion. Um, you know, I, I like Epson printers. I um, they're really good. HP makes a good wireless product. I like their stuff. Uh, HP's, I've used their, their wireless. They actually, I think they're working on a Bluetooth one too. They have an email printer now too. So, uh, I would personally recommend going probably with an HP or, or an Epson wireless printer. I think they make the best. The one thing you're going to want to do is, I don't know how tech savvy you are, but, um, setting up a wireless printer, you're going to need your password for your, for your wireless router. So make sure you have that when you do the setup. Oh, let's see. By the way, I'm just going to reiterate, you can, you can send all, uh, or your questions to me at Lapani Tech on Twitter and at Lapani Tech on Skype. By the way, just I wanted to reiterate that. I don't know how many people, some people might not be, might have missed that being in the broadcast. By the way, folks, I throw all these questions up on the uh, up on the website after we're done here. All the stuff we talk about all in the show notes. I do a pretty lengthy show notes, as most of you have seen. Um, that's one thing I'm really big into is doing really detailed show notes. So you can find all the stuff, all this information up on the technologygeek.org under our, uh, under, right under our, uh, you see the technology geek podcast, click on that. And right there you see podcasts and uh, click on that and you're more than, uh, you're more than ready to go. So, Let's see 
What else do we have here? Yeah, we just need a whole tab on the new site, by the way, to the podcast, which is great because, I mean, the podcast was the bread and butter. It really was sort of drawing everybody into the site. So I'm glad we just needed a whole little area of the site for that. That really is, I'm really happy about that. Um, here's a good one. Here, just, well, it's kind of after Christmas, but I don't know why they're asking. To, uh, geek gift for under 100 bucks. Um, geek gift for under 100 bucks. Jeez. Well, you could gift them uh, an Amazon. Um, you could gift them an Amazon subscription. That's seventy five bucks. That's under hundred bucks. You could gift them a Roku. There you go. Plug in our sponsors during answer in the questions time. You could. I mean, because that's only fifty nine bucks if you use our special. So that that would be an option. Um, I think what else you could do for hundred hundred. You know, the, the, it really depends. I'm not really sure what they're into, but I mean, I would say probably an Amazon Prime. Subscription. I think everybody buys off Amazon. That's a universal present. Uh, you could use. They like said you could get them a Roku for fifty nine bucks. Um, I mean, there's a lot of. I mean, you know, my cell phone has a lot of accessories for under a hundred bucks, especially if you go on eBay. Um, I bought it from the reiterate again, our eBay store, aacrstore.com, um, or like I said, on our website. Click on the store link. Um, let's see what else do we have. Yeah, well, this is, like I said, as far as a gift goes, I'm going to say I, I personally would give them an Amazon Prime for seventy five bucks. They're going to get a lot for your money. That's the best part. It's a gift that they're going to they're going to it's going to give them a whole year of something, and, 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 and so they're going to remember you, and uh, they're going to get a, a lot for their money. So second day shipping, free book, all those movies on Prime. So something that I think would be definitely be worth it. Oh, another hardware question. Well, it could be hardware. It could be Windows. It could be a couple different things. Uh, I keep getting a blue screen of death um, and buzzing noise on my machine. What could I do? Well, the buzzing noise could be a fan. You could be overheating. That's an option. Could be. Could be. Uh, could be. If it's, a, if it's a buzzing or a clicking. If it's a clicking noise, it's probably the hard drive. I would recommend making a backup right away. A lot of backup solutions out there, but uh, make a backup of the drive. And then start troubleshooting. Download the ultimate boot disk and um, run. Find out what kind of hard drive you have in it. Run a, run a hard drive test on the machine. See see what's wrong with it. Um, that's probably going to be your best bet because I mean you probably I'm going to guess you're probably either having a hard you're having some type of either hardware. I mean I'm not sure exactly what, you know wh- what your OS is or anything like that. There's not really enough information in the question, but. Um, I'm gonna guess if it's if it's Windows Vista or Windows Seven, you're probably got a hardware problem. I would download the Ultimate Boot Disk. You can get the Ultimate Boot CD dot com and run the hard drive test. Find out what kind of hard drive you have. Run the hard drive test. You can get that information by going into the BIOS, finding out if it's like WD, it's combustion digital, SG, Samsung. Uh, you know, find out what kind of drive you have and, and boot off the uh, ultimate boot disk and run the hard drive test. And then two run. There's also uh, some memory tests. You want to check the RAM out. You might have a bad stick of RAM. And uh, it might be a couple of those things. It's got a buzz in it. It might be the fan. If I want to open it up, take a can of, sp- of uh, spray air, spray down those fans, all that, clean it out. Um, you know, get it, get it nice and clean so you're not overheating, especially if you're hearing a buzzing noise because that could be the drive too. That's what I would do. Let's see. Oh, here we go. This is this is, this is uh, an original question I haven't gotten in a while. Uh, I have a Singer sewing machine that I use for embroidery. Do you see any... Any need to upgrade from my XP machine to a Windows Vista or Windows 7 machine? You know, I'm going to tell you, in this situation, I would just leave it alone unless the machine's even your problem. I'm going to tell you why. Okay, because if you get a new machine, you don't know if Singer has upgraded their software yet. So I would say, if, if I were you, what I would do is, I would go ahead and I would just leave well enough alone uh, if it's that important to you, unplug it from the internet. Don't even link it on the web. Just use it for your singer sewing machine. It's not going to hurt anything. Buy yourself if you want to buy a new machine. Buy a new machine, and just use it for. Uh, you know, just just go ahead and just just use it for you, and uh, you know, leave the other one unplugged from the internet and. Uh, just just use it for your sewing machine. That's it. Especially with that type of thing, because usually places like that uh, are usually really slow getting their software updated. Um, I've seen it dealing with for years with with software manufacturers. I mean, they're old, people. A lot of them are always behind. So if I were you, I would just just wait a little bit. 
Uh, you can go to their website and, uh, and check, uh, you know, find out if they, what their software supports. That's an option if you really want to buy a new computer and use it for that. There's a lot you could do. If you want, if you want to uh, send me another email, we can, we, can, I can, we can get further into that. But like I said, I would check their website. Uh, like I said, or I would just leave the machine off the Internet and just use it for your embroidery and get yourself another machine. Use it for surfing the web and all that type of stuff and just use that other one for your embroidery. That's what I would do. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brandon, I know a lot about computers and programming. I've been reading up a lot on programming. Uh, do you have any suggestions when it comes to writing an app? Uh, I would like to make some money possibly writing app, writing an app and selling it or doing something with it. You know, that that's really tough. And I'm going to tell you why. A lot of people don't realize writing an app isn't just as much as writing an app because most of the apps are cloud-based. You're going to need hosting. You're going to need storage. You're going to need bandwidth. You might need other programmers. Um, it, it, you're going to need some money. Um, you know, especially in the Valley, you get a lot of angel investors. One guy at the loan you, you know, they'll throw money at you. I know Google's been doing this with uh, their venture capitalists. They'll throw money at a guy and just say, okay, let's see what he can do. And, uh, you know, we'll go from there. But, uh, you know, you're definitely going to want to do some. If you're going to write an app, take it small. Don't quit your full-time job. Don't, don't you know, just say, hey, this is all I'm going to do full-time for a year. You know, uh, companies like Instagram uh, or companies like Skype or Zynga, they're one in, they're one at a billion practically. Um, you get one good company out of about you know, to, I mean, out of like a, a, a million flops. I mean, that's just the way it is. Um, you know, especially especially in the music industry, if you're looking at writing a music app, oh my goodness, Rhapsody and Spotify are like everybody looks at them and says, wow, they did so great, but they're one out of one out of so many that have gone under over the years. I mean, Microsoft can't even get a music product off the ground. Look at how kind of a disaster the Zoom was. But uh, that's something that I'm definitely going to advise to say if you are going to do it. You know, you are going to need money. Start out small. Don't quit your full time job. Just keep working on it. And. Um, you know, it's something you have to keep chugging away at for a while. Like I said, it, it become an overnight sensation like Instagram or Skype or, or any of those and get bought out by a bigger company like Google or Microsoft or any of them. You know, the, it's it's one in a million. Um, you know, there's there's been, you know, Instagram did great, but I bet you there was, you know, a hundred of those types of apps that failed. And the other thing is, too, the app market's getting saturated. You know, the app market's becoming like another dot-com. It's, it's getting really, really saturated and... Um, I think we're on the way to the dot com crash personally, but that's just me. We'll see what happens as, as time progresses. But uh, I think there's a lot. I think the app market is is really gotten saturated. You know, if you jumped on the bandwagon in the early early years, you know, when when Apple was exclusive with AT and T, I think you probably did all right. But now it's it's tough market. So, like I said, if you're going to do that, you know, don't quit your full time job. Do it at night and on the weekends and. Uh, you know, take your time with it. Don't rush it. It takes it takes time to build it, build it. So, take your time, and uh, you know, definitely look at some investors, some small investors at the beginning, and go from there. And only get money when you need it. Don't waste it. Way too many people I've seen just they they get money from these investors and and they spend money on useless stuff like office furniture and stuff like that. Only take money when you need it. Use it for the product you need it for, and that's it. Remember, every investor you get, you're giving away part of your company. Remember that. Oh, let's see. What else? What else? We'll do, we'll, we'll, do one more, we'll do one more question, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and then we'll, then, we'll, then we'll probably wrap it up here. Um, oh, this is a neat, neat question. I, I guess it's kind of a different question. Uh, what do things like the Roku, DVR, and smart TVs run on OS-wise? Um, most of them run on Linux and BSD, actually. Um, you know, you, you don't get a lot, a lot of things run on, on Linux and BSD. Uh, they're not going to put my, put Windows on it because they don't want to pay the licensing. They're going to use an open source product, so they don't have to pay licensing. Remember, they're only selling the device for fifty nine bucks, or they're only selling the device for you know thirty bucks. So they they need, they need to cut margins, but they can. And using an open source OS is going to be probably the best way they can do it. Uh, also, too, they they want to keep they don't want to use Windows because they want to prevent viruses and all that. Because Linux, as you know, is a lot less, lot less virus prone. So they're going to use you know they're going to use BSD or Linux or, or something like that, and uh, they're, they're not going to use Windows. They don't run on Windows. Or, or, or that thing, but they don't run on the Mac OS either because of the whole licensing piece. I mean, Apple TV does, but for the most part, you know, all your DVRs and, and smart TVs and all that either run on BSD, Linux of, of some sort, um, some sort of flavor of, of that. So that's what they run. That was a good question, actually. That was one that we haven't had. That's actually another original question we actually got. I haven't had one in the show in a while. 
Actually, nobody's ever asked me that, show, that question on the show. And I think we're going to wrap it up here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I just want to say one more thing. Uh, I want to thank everybody for the questions, and uh, thank everybody for the patience of moving over to the new site. And uh, thanks for all the support that we've gotten over the years. We're going to continue to do this. The site's going to get bigger now, especially since we're moving. The site's going to get bigger and better. As everybody can see, the site's definitely came quite away from what it was, uh, you know, a, a year or so ago. But uh, it's all from your support and uh, in, in your reading and uh, in your listening. So I want to thank you very much for that. We, we thank you very much and uh, appreciate everybody. And we hope to grow our audience and, and keep the people we have. And maybe you can tell a friend and that friend can tell another friend and that friend can tell two friends and, uh, you know, we'll get bigger and bigger and uh, maybe provide you much, much better content and uh, and much better, uh, much better site. And, uh, you know, as we grow, you know, and, uh, and, and work on the site, you know, if anybody has any suggestions, feel free to, you know, get to me. Uh, there's a contact page on there. Feel free to email me, uh, you know, or contact me if you have any suggestions. Uh, you know, I've kind of, I think the site's definitely came a long way, and I'm very glad we've grown as we have. Especially in only a year's time, we've gotten quite a few followers and quite a few uh, readers. So I want to thank everybody again for that. Uh, again, if you want, you know, you take out all of our all of our stuff on our topics there. If you look on our topics, you can see it's all different topics on all Windows, Microsoft, uh, Google, Apple, security, uh, amateur radio, and anything under there, you can see all that stuff. So there's a lot of good posts. Those are all of our old posts. If you're looking for any of the old posts, they are up there. And, uh, and, and I am moving over. I think I have another two or 300 more posts to do, so they're all up there. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, click on our store, buy any of our products, again, aacrstore.com. And uh, thanks to all of our wonderful sponsors, uh, you know, Malwarebytes, Roku, Audible, Amazon cloud service that's up there on the main page right now but we'll be rotating our ads around and um, I want to thank everybody and thank you for a wonderful podcast and uh, we will see you again next week with more tech news and uh, we'll talk tech talk geek and uh, we'll ha- find out what else is coming out talk about what's new and improved and uh, thank you for listening and uh, we'll see you next week